Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex. And as you can see here, I've got the Plex amp player running once again on my phone. We've covered this a number of times in the past because it's a really cool music player that gets all these new features added all the time. And at the core of it is its discoverability features where it helps you find things that you have in your library that you haven't listened to before. It's got some neat AI tricks that it can do to find songs that sound very similar to one another and just keep playing things that uh, take you down a musical journey. Well, they've just added a new feature to the mix that involves ChatGPT. They call it Sonic Sage, and you can use ChatGPT's engine to develop playlist recommendations for you, and it actually works pretty well. And if you've got a big library, I think you might want to play around with this feature a little bit, but it also works with Tidal, which is a music service that links up with Plex Amp. So we're going to dive into this in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see how AI can improve our musical recommendations. Now, in order for this to work, you do need to get an API key from the OpenAI platform. Note that there is a charge for using that key, but it is very, very minimal. I would say far less than one cent per query. Right now, I've run probably 30 or 40 different queries as I've been experimenting with the feature and I've been charged only three cents, but it might vary based on the complexity of the queries that you're making and if you're on the GPT-4 API versus the three. I'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, but for the most part, just know there will be a very minimal cost to this, but there is a cost. Now note that this is different than the Chat GPT Plus subscription plan that they have for their chat product. So you don't have to be subscribed to that for this to work. Now to get it to work, what you do is get your app up to date and go over to the gear icon here in the Plex Amp app and then go over to Advanced. And what you will see is an option now for Sonic Sage. And if you tap on that, you will see that it has an option for an open AI API key. And what you do for that is go back to your web browser and go over to the API section here on the screen and generate a new secret key. You'll need to copy and paste that over to your phone inside of that API key section. There's no save button, so all you have to do is paste it in and then just hit the back button to come back out. Now you will have the option to use GPT-4 when it's available, and this is something that they're rolling out slowly to their API users. And if you have this on your API account, it will cost more, and I don't know what the cost differences are at the moment I'm shooting this video. So you will get a higher quality result here when you have access to GPT-4, but it comes at a greater cost and it might be a little bit slower. But I have it enabled even though uh, for this demo it's only going to be using the older 3.5 model. And that's really all you need to do to get it set up. So let's take a look now and see how it works. Now Sonic Sage lives inside of the search icon here. And when you tap on it, what you will get at the top is now an option for Sonic Sage. And if you tap on that, you'll be brought to the Sonic Sage interface. And what I'm going to do is a real simple search here to kick things off, which is the top songs from the spring of 1998 when I graduated college 25 years ago. It goes quick and it's kind of scary. <laughs> um, so I'm going to click the search button there. And what it's going to do is go out through that API key and ping ChatGPT. ChatGPT is going to respond with a, re with a result and it's going to match that to the database. Now right now I am using uh, the Tidal database because it's much larger than my personal one. But if you have a personal database that's rather large, you'll get a lot of great results and maybe find things that you weren't thinking about here. And what's really cool about it is that as these results come in, uh, we're getting a nice narrative about the track and how it might relate to the search here. And so you get kind of the best of ChatGPT without having to leave the app. And then once it's done building the playlist, you can go ahead and play it. Unfortunately, at the moment, it does not uh, save this. So you will have to do a little bit of work to build out a playlist of what it finds. But I'm sure they could add more to this feature over time. And it'll do you know, a small number of tracks here, enough to get you started. And then you can click play here and have everything added to the mix or shuffle through them. So if I hit play, 
All of these tracks will be added to my up next and it'll just go through them all. I lose though the description of the tracks as we go, but this is the kind of basic functionality that it starts with. But because it's ChatGPT, you can really dig in. So let's try a few other examples. So let's try this one. Build a playlist of lesser known female rockers from the last 20 years. And we'll jump back into here and run that search. Some of these more obscure searches may take longer because if it can't find a match from what ChatGPT is supplying, it's going to go back and ask for a few more suggestions. Uh, but it's starting to build this out here, and we've got now uh, Alice Bowman and Broken Social Scene, a bunch of stuff that I haven't heard of before, and some of it actually is pretty good from some of the testing that I've been doing earlier. Now, like other AIs, you might be interacting with how you word the prompt is really important. So you'll notice here that I use the words lesser known to describe the female rockers I was looking for as opposed to something else, because earlier I used the word obscure and that delivered some popular results in with some of the less than popular ones. But I found I got a better result by tweaking my prompt to use the uh, phrase lesser known and that's what got us what we were looking for here. But I found that what we got had some more mellow stuff and I wanna hear some higher energy music. So let's revise this prompt and see what we get. So now I'm gonna add one more descriptor here, which is high energy lesser known female rockers from the last 20 years. And let's go ahead and submit that search and see what we get. So it came back with a bunch of new tracks that I hadn't heard of before, but some of them were in the punk genre and I got nothing against punk, but maybe that's not what I want to listen to today. So what I'm gonna do is resubmit this now and say, but no punk and see what we get. And there you go, I got a bunch of new recommendations now of high energy non-punk rock bands uh, led by female lead singers. And we can go in and explore this a bit further. Uh, note that this is ChatGPT and of course it's not always accurate. So it's never gonna be 100% correct all the time but I'm finding that a lot of these searches that I'm running are working pretty well. And I found it's pretty good at making recommendations. Here's another deep cut here. Find modern music inspired by Indonesian gamelan. Uh, that was something I learned about in my music appreciation class in college those many decades ago. And it came up with some interesting results here. It's got a rap song that it thinks sounds kind of like gamelan, or at least has some structure that is similar to it. And of course we can narrow that down a bit more to get uh, more specific, but still it was interesting to see what it came up with and you'll also get its reasoning as to why those tracks are included. Now, as I mentioned, you can run these searches against your own database and if you've got a big enough database, you should be able to get some good results out of it. But we've been running these tests against Tidal's database and Tidal is a music service that is partnered with Plex, which you can get for an additional $8.99 a month and then it will integrate into your Plex applications and into Plex AMP, which is what we've been playing with here. What's cool about it is that you do get lossless CD quality FLAC audio that is streamed down to the device. So right now, this is one of the songs that the AI recommended to us. As you can see, the music format here is FLAC and it's coming in at full CD quality. They have another plan where the artists are paid directly based on how you listen to them. So if you wanted to support independent artists a little bit more, that one might be the plan to pick. And there are some neat integrations that Tidal makes into Plex's music system. So you can actually augment your own database with tracks from Tidal and put them all in the same playlist. Just know though, you can't download the Tidal tracks through Plex for offline listening, even though you can do that on your own database. I did a whole video on how Tidal integrates, which I'll put uh, down below in the master playlist. And that's gonna do it for this look at AI searches here using Plexam. Kind of a neat little thing to play around with if you're interested. And if you didn't wanna go through the effort of setting it up, now you know how it works and you can decide if you want to make that effort to get it going. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.